so are in here so that I can just send it out to them or I can just post it on on the YouTube as uh, so that the, everybody can have access to this. So what we will be having, uh, let me open this. Um, okay. So uh, our class for today would be this. You can see the uh, slides, right? Can you all see the slides? Wala. No, Father. Wala, Father. Hold on. Wala, Father. Abo. Ay, this one. Sorry. Hindi sa itong gibuhat. Okay. Let's try to do this in a... Kita na, Father. How about this one? Yes, Father. Yes, Father. Okay. So, uh, one of the the things that we would be learning with philosophy of religion would be the arguments for God's existence. And of course, the classical arguments are still in up until today because this is what well, many of the philosophers are banking on as they would be um, proving God's existence because the last couple of meetings we are trying to, in a way, we are presupposing that there is already a God that we have been uh, discussing who he is and what is religion and all these things. So now we will have to see uh, proofs, according to some philosophers, proofs of God's existence or proofs for God's existence. We will be having to discuss uh, two philosophers uh, who are at the same time saints. We have St. Anselm and St. Saint, uh, Saint Aquinas, St. Thomas Aquinas, that we will be using uh, for, to, to prove uh, using the classical arguments of the existence of God. So first, the ontological arguments. The ontological arguments, ontolog ontology means to say that it's a study of, it's a branch of metaphysics that deals with the study of the, 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 the nature of beings, what um, the, the cause of the existence or the reason or the existence of a being. So that's ontology. So basing on, on, on the being, basing on the existence of, we will be having our, our arguments. Okay, so that's uh, what we call as the ontological arguments according to, to Saint, uh, Saint Anselm. So his argument is simply like this. So he said, because there is, for example, in, in his argument, he would say that it, every time you're going to hear the word God, there's already a, a concept that is built in in our mind. So his first argument, or his, the premise of his argument would be, God is the greatest possible being. Why? Because every time we hear the word God, what comes into our mind is this uh, a huge or a uh, power greater than us. So his premise would be God is the greatest possible being. And he said, and of course, because whenever we say the word God, there is already the concept that is formed in our minds. And so he said God exists at least in the mind. First, at least in the mind. So, uh, can, uh, it's already even the least possible existence of God is that He is existing in our minds. So, but then He continued with the second, the third uh, argument that He had. He said, "But a being who exists only in the mind is not as great as a being who exists in reality as well as in the mind." So He said, "The the first premise for 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 Saint Anselm would be He said." If God exists, is ex no, no, this is not the one. Uh, Saint Anselm would say God is the greatest possible being. That's the concept that we would be that is formed in our minds whenever we hear the word God. And he said, at least it is in the mind. No? At least because it is already in the mind. Because whenever we hear the word, the concept, we hear the word. There is a concept that is associated with the word. But he said, but a being who exists only in the mind cannot be a great as a being who exists in reality as well as in the mind. So, for example, if you're going to have to, to hear the word man or humanity or woman, we have it in our mind. At the same time, this man, this humanity, this woman exists in reality because we can touch, you can see it exists. And so he said, um, it cannot be that way because if God existed only in the mind, he would not be the greatest possible being. So, and he continued, hence, God must exist in reality as well as in the mind. 
So there was a kind of arguments that St. Anselm was, um, you know, presenting then of what would be the proof of God's existence. He would start, as, his, as, as, as the argument says, it's an ontological argument, which means to say it focuses on the being that is, uh, that we can conceive of every time we hear the word. So the word is God, and in our minds there is a conception of who and what this being is. And he said, God, according to our mind, according to our concept, is the greatest possible being. Although we can say that now, we can say, before, we simply have to, majority will simply have to, to swallow it. Why? Because it's coming from a priest. Because it's coming from a priest, then it means to say that it must be true. It must be right. It must be uh, what, is, uh, what is actually there. And so... Many would be argue, many would be arguing that um, before ilalang the water. This is actually for them. This is a good argument. But then later on, they said, "No, no. Uh, let's pause for a while because uh, if this is real, the ontological argument is actually valid. But the premise is actually already presupposing when we say that God is the greatest possible being. We already laying down the foundation, and there's no way." That it cannot it can be negated because our statement in itself is already conclusive of who this god is so for for others they would say it still is a weak argument it still is a weak argument because it really is not proving anything but for saint anselm for him this is a very strong argument because the being that we have in our minds the concept that we have in our minds are already it's already a proof that there is, in reality, a being that was conceived. So then if we simply now, our minds can conceive of a being greater than, uh, the, the greatest possible being, but it is not in existence in reality. There was one that says, for example, if you would be thinking of an island that is so great and nothing can be compared to that kind of an island, uh, so is that, does that mean to say that di that island automatically exists? But St. Anselm would say, no, 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 we cannot compare contingent beings with the concept about God. So the argument stopped there. Now, I know it's a, that was before. In other words, the classical arguments. It was an ontological argument of, the, of God's existence. And uh, St. Anselm continued in his second argument. He said, if God exists, his existence is necessary. Okay. So remember, uh, what is in our minds are then considered as real and true. So if we can conceive it in our minds, then it is possible that it is also existing in, in reality. Excuse me. So his first, again, the, the second argument of St. Anselm is that his second argument, the first premise is that if God exists, his existence is necessary. So if there is a God, then his existence is necessary. And the second argument would be, if God does not exist, his existence is impossible. So, duhanad, you have two options. Either God exists, or he does not exist. Therefore, God's existence is either necessary or impossible. You have only two options. But then, God's existence is possible. St. Anselm would say, it's, the existence of God is not impossible. It is, it is a possibility, right? It is a possibility that there is a power greater than us. It is a possibility that nature, as it works, there is a power beyond it. So it is not an impossibility. But be, and because we can accept that the existence of God is a possibility, and so he said, therefore, God's existence is necessary. So that's the kind of, that's the kind of thinking, and it's a kind of argument that St. Anselm was having then. No? Uh, these are very classical arguments which are actually using premise upon premise before they get to have into conclusion. Uh, let's try to proceed with the cosmological arguments before we can, uh, I'll, I'll be entertaining some of your questions. Cosmological arguments, it says that there is a, it is also known as the first cause argument. The, the premise of this is that some contingent beings exist. Now, I am a contingent being. You are all contingent being, which means to say that you may or you may not exist. Now, 
the world continues even if I exist or I do not exist. For example, if I will no longer be around tomorrow, if you will no longer be around tomorrow, it's not that the world stops. I am not a necessary being. Not one of us is a necessary being. We can be, for example, uh, your parents are a necessary being for your existence. So you were, you are a contingent being and your parents were necessary beings, but at the same time they were contingent beings because they, even if they were necessary for you, but for the entire world, they may or they might not exist, the world continues. So uh, in the first class arguments, many of the philosophers are saying that some contingent beings exist, and it's true. No? The premise is true. The second, the, sec the second premise is that if any contingent beings exist, then a necessary being must exist. No? I, I, as a contingent being, I cannot exist on my own, so some power must have started me. It is my mother who started, my father who started me. They are the necessary being of my being. And there, but although they were necessary beings, but they were also contingent beings in relation to their parents. So, kanabang, uh, my, our existence is not in our own will, shall we say. No? I cannot just say that, for example, mayingun uh, lang si Josh, or Josh is going to say that today I'm going to exist. No, somebody has to cause us. So that's a, what is called as the first cause argument. And so, therefore, according to this argument, therefore, there exists a necessary being, which is the ultimate cause of the existence of contingent beings. This contingent, more about patras na to, no? Uh, for example, your, you, you, this is you, and this is your parents, and this is your grandparents, your great great grandparents, and the, the, the lolo, the lolo up until there. Subay, subay, up until, uh, until when. So this argument says, therefore, because there are contingent beings whose beings are dependent on somebody else's causing, at the end of the line, there has to be a one ultimate being that is the cause of these contingent beings. First cause arguments or the cosmological arguments. But there are also... Uh, arguments against this. As many critics have pointed out, this version of the cosmological argument is not a proof of God's existence because even if it is successful, it proves only the existence of some necessary beings that is the cause of all contingent beings. It does not establish that there is only one such being. So, for example, in the, in the human race, we do not argue that there is one single cause of humanity. There is one single necessary being for humanity. But the question is, is the same cause, or is the same necessary being the one causing for the existence of the animals, for the birds, for the fish, for the sun, the moon, everything else? So this argument for them is weak because these some necessary beings aren't necessarily be the only necessary being. And if it is not the necessary being, then that does not that doesn't mean to say that it is God already. No? So ang um, ang um, um point is ang um, um point ni Annie is although it is a valid argument to say that I am a contingent being, my mother is a necessary being for my existence, and going atras atras patarito, going backwards, we will be able to say that uh, we will soon reach our the necessary being. But that is only for humanity. How about for those, uh, for the animals and the birds and the fish? So this would be the arguments against it. It does not establish that this being is omnipotent, omniscient, perfectly good, and so forth attributes a being must possess to be God. Nevertheless, given that God is taken by theists to be both a necessary being and the creator of the universe, a successful cosmological argument would obviously constitute a crucial part of a cumulative case for theism. So what is this saying is that um, it cannot really, the, the one that was mentioned about, about the first cause argument, although there are some contingent beings, this is some contingent beings, this some contingent being is not going to prove at to down into one single cause of everything. So he cannot be the 
the necessary being. So that's uh, the, the arguments and the arguments against. Now, let's move into the St. Thomas's Aquinas, five proofs of God's existence. So for St. Thomas, which argument has been widely accepted up until probably the 17th or the 18th century. So this is the argument of God's existence that has been so acceptable and so famous. So everybody seems to be quoting this. So, so for St. Thomas, the, there are five arguments for the proofs of God's existence. The first one is the argument from notion. The second one is the argument from efficient cause. The third one is the argument from possibility and necessity, which is close to the first cause um, argument. And the fourth one is the argument from gradation of being. And the fifth one is the argument from design. So let's start with the argument from notion. According to St. Thomas, he begins, these are the first, second, third, uh, continuous uh, pre um, statements, okay? He said, our senses proves that some things are in motion. So, who was it? Uh, was it Isaac, uh, the Newton um, fury of motion? Was it Newton? I don't know. Who was it? I don't know. Uh, the, the object in motion continues in motion, the object at halt continues at halt, unless it is, who was it that says it? Uh, I don't know, I forgot. So, but according to uh, the arguments for motion, our senses prove that some things are in motion. We see it around, no? There are moving objects. Things move with potential motion becomes actual motion. For example, a rock on, on top of a mountain, you know, it is a potential notion, pero if somebody's going to cause it, you know, if somebody's going to push it, then the potential motion becomes an actual motion. Only an actual motion can convert a potential motion into an actual motion. For example, if this is a, if this is a, a, a ball, and this is also another ball, if I'm going to put it on, on top of the table, they are always in, in potential motion. It's not going to be moving. So this is just a potentiality. It is a kinetic. And so in order for these, either one of these to move, the other one has to be an actual motion. Only an actual motion can convert a potential motion into an actual motion. So this has to move first. If both of them are not moving, it's not moving forever. Somebody has to start the motion. So nothing can be at once in both actuality and potentiality in the same respect, which means say this one, this, the one in potentiality cannot both be a potentiality and an actuality at the same time. It has to either be, it has to be either be a potentiality or an actuality. It's either moving or not moving. It cannot be a moving and not moving at the same time. So therefore nothing can move itself. So this, if this is in, this is in a halt, this is a moving, this means to say that if not, it's not, this is not going to be moving forever. So therefore, nothing can move itself. And therefore, each thing in motion is moved by something else. So the domino effect, no? So, the sequence of motion cannot extend at infinitum. No? You can say that tamang dito mag-atras ka kung kinsa ginagsugod sa motion. The sequence of motion cannot extend at infinitum. Therefore, it is necessary to arrive at the first mover put in motion by no other, and this everyone resents to be God. So, according to St. Thomas Aquinas, looking around us, there is always motion. And if you're going to see motion, the motion that we see is caused by an actuality prior to it. And this actuality prior to it was caused by another actuality because this actuality before was a potentiality. move, no, that would be chaos. If everything is moved and nothing is and nothing is in halt, that would be chaos. So for, for St. Thomas Aquinas, he said, at first there is potentiality and there is actuality. But this actuality was once a potentiality that was caused by an actuality. 
And he said, we cannot go ad infinitum, yeah, backwards. So, muni yahangi sulti. Therefore, oh, sorry. It is necessary to arrive at the first mover put in motion by no other, and this everyone understands to be done. So I hope it's clear for you, for us, the argument from motion. You just have to, to, to think of potentiality and actuality. A thing in motion cannot be in motion unless it is caused by a thing that is already moving. And that would be, but he said, we cannot just move backwards at infinitum. So therefore, there has to be a necessary being that causes this motion. Okay. The second one would be the argument from efficient cause. Again, it's just going back to how it started. St. Thomas Aquinas said, we perceive a series of efficient causes of things in the world. Hold on. Nothing exists, exists prior to itself. Therefore, nothing in the world of things you perceive is the efficient cause of itself. If a previous efficient cause that does exist, neither does the thing that results, the effect. Therefore, if the first thing in the series does not exist, nothing in the series exists. If the series of efficient causes extends ad infinitum into the past and for then, there would be no things existing now. That is plainly false. There are things existing now because there are in existence in the same way, remember the first cause argument of cos the cosmological argument. Uh, there is what we call as the efficient cause, and there is also the first efficient cause, the one that begins everything, the one that started everything. Because we see something, for example, I see this. This is, uh, this is a mouse, right? Uh, this is a mouse. And this mouse exists simply because a company created this. Because this com a, a company created this, this means to say that it has actually, uh, before, it, before it is that exists, and now it, is, it exists because some efficient cost caused it. And that efficient cost cannot exist on its own. It has to be caused again by something that was an efficient cost for it. Again, we cannot go ad infinitum according to St. Thomas Aquinas. Then we have to attribute it to, therefore, it is necessary to admit a first efficient cause to which every, everyone gives the name of God. Now it's an argument from efficient cause. I know it's kind of a little bit dragging on, a little bit boring, but this is uh, classical. This is ancient, so we have to really talk about the classical arguments of Anselm and, and St. Thomas Aquinas. Three more, three more, okay? And the third one is the argument from possibility and necessity. Remember the cosmological argument, the contingent beings and the necessary being. You know? We find in nature things that are possible to be and not to be, that come into being and go out of being, the contingent beings. For example, uh, if, for example, some of you are going to get married soon, probably in five years or ten years' time, you know? before you don't have your son or your daughter, or let's just use you, let's just use you. Uh, many of you are born uh, in 2002, 2003. Uh, what year were you all born? The majority? Uh, March or so? Uh, 2001, Father. Uh, 2001, okay, thank you, Mark. So, 2001. Okay, so in before prior to 2001, Mark wasn't existing yet. No. He is, he, he can possibly be and not to be. No. To be or not to be, that was the question. No. Is he going to be existing or not? Nobody knows. But because the mother and the father of Mark to Cisco met, then he is now, a, because everybody, every, all of us are a possibility. But we cannot be a necessity. Okay, kung wala magkita ang mama o papa ni Mark, Mark is not going to be existing today. So, we find in nature things that are possible to be and not to be. He can be, now he is, but prior to 2001, he was not. So, he is a contingent being. Okay, so assume that every being is a contingent being because we have a cause. Somebody caused us to exist. 
for each contingent being, there is a time it doesn't exist, right? I told you, in probably in 1998, not one of you in my class existed. No? When, I was, when I was already at Xavier University, I was already, what, second year college? When I was already studying at Xavier for philosophy, not one of you existed. So you are all contingent beings because you may or you may not have existed, okay? And therefore, it is impossible for this always to exist. You cannot say that, oh, Father, I already existed in, in 1907. I just did not make myself be seen by anyone. No? I was already around the world in, in what, in 1855. No? When, when Magellan la actually landed in Cebu, I was already there. No, I just did not make myself be seen by anyone. No, no, no. It's not, po it's not a possibility. No? So you, you did not exist before, but now you are in existence. It's because you are a contingent being caused by your necessary being. So this argument from possibility and necessity says that it is impossible for this always to exist. Therefore, there could have been a time when no things existed. So come on, this, for example, the generation of 2001, if you're going to uh, go backwards, uh, given they probably your parents got married in, I don't know, uh, in the year 2000 or 1995. Now, those who got married in 1995, if they were not married in 1995, there was no generation that follows them. Or, and then if you're going to count another 30 years prior to that, and they could have not existed then, so, wala to mga generation. So, until maabutan time, nothing existed. Nothing existed. But, because, therefore, at the time, there would have been nothing to bring the currently existing contingent beings into existence. Therefore, nothing would be in existence now. If there was, if we have to make atras and remove all the generations prior to that, because the generation prior to that did not exist, and the second one that followed an ad infinitum there, therefore nothing would be in existence now. But then we have reached an absurd result from assuming that every being is a contingent being. If we, if we think that every being, all the beings in the world are contingent beings, or all the existence are contingent beings, therefore it is a possibility, there was a possibility that nothing really exists. Therefore that every being is a contingent being. It has to be there must be a being that started the existence of some beings. Therefore, some beings exist of its own necessity and does not receive its existence from another, from another being, but rather causes them. These all men speak of as God. So, because if all the beings are contingent beings, so there was a... And then those contingent beings from Patras Paimustamoy, was, we ended up with the first contingent beings. So there, was, there should be nothing that exists in the world. But because we existed, so there must be a necessary being that started it. That was the argument of, from possibility and necessity. Okay? That because there, is, there are possibilities, and if, I remove, if we're going to remove all the possibilities, then we end up not having anyone. But because we have someone in the world, so there must be a, necess a necessary being that causes it. Okay, last two, last two. Gamay uh, um, The fourth one is the argument from gradation of being. Uh, the, the, the value or the importance of a being. There is a gradation to be found in things. Some are better or worse than others, okay? Predic predications of degree require reference to the uttermost case. A thing is said to be hotter according as it, it more nearly resembles that which is hottest. The maximum en energy genos, genos is the cause of all the gen genos. Is it genos or genos? Genos. Therefore, there must also be something which to all beings the cause of the being, the goodness and every other perfection. And this is what we call God. For example, if you see someone so good, no, that is an argument of, 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 of St. Thomas Aquinas. No. You see beauty. No, you see beauty. And in beauty, there is gradation. The, the, the beautiful, more beautiful, and then most beautiful. And then because there is beautiful that uh, is compared to the most beautiful, 
So in Thomas Aquinas said, because there, we know that there is gradation of being, there is a being that is not, lesser in degree, okay? okay? Uh, so there must be, for example, you just have to use, I don't know, uh, starting off with... Uh, make them into, you can say, the most important no? the insects or the animals or whatever it is, humanity. What, how, what, what St. Thomas Aquinas is trying to say is that there is uh, a gradation of being. So we, so we can compare because we see that there is perfection. No? We see, for example, we, you see a person that is so kind and so nice. And then compared it to the ones that is not nicer, compared to the one that is so nice, then we say nice, nicer, and nicest. Because there is a gradation of being, St. Thomas Aquinas will say that at every perfection, this is what God is. So we can only see, we can only, uh, we can only surmise that there is the most beautiful because we have seen the gradation of it from a beautiful, more beautiful, most beautiful. I don't know what's the next. It's we only have until... Uh, ng comparative degree, no? Tayo uh, sa most beautiful. Pero for St. Thomas Aquinas, there is a being, that, a perfection of being that causes all of these beings. So this is what we call as the gradation of arguments according to, from gradation of being. Now we are in the last one, okay? Argument from design. And this is what we call as the theologic, teleological, not theological, Teleological argument. What is the end goal? We see that the natural bodies work towards some goal and do not do so by chance. Most natural things lack knowledge, but as an, an arrow reaches its target because it is directed by an archer, what lacks intelligence achieves goals by being directed by something intelligence or by something intelligent. Therefore, some intelligent being exists by whom all natural things are directed to their end. And this being we call God. So the argument from design. So we see that uh, things that are in, uh, in, unintelligible was actually doing its thing simply because an intelligent being uh, designed it. For example, the world revolves or the world revolves around the sun, right? The world in itself is, uh, according to according to classical arguments, the world in itself is unintelligent. It doesn't have a mind of its own. No? If you're going to look at the earth, it is just existed. There was no mind, according to them, although it would be negated right now by some others who are saying that uh, the world has its own mind, but it's not the same compared to ours. But anyways, for the classical arguments, they would say that the world is unintelligible. But because it is unintelligible, how can it is actually revolving around the, around the, around the sun to which they can actually have sunlight? So for, for the arguments from design, it means to say that there must be a being that is directing this. And the earth is rotating around its axis. It's rotating around its axis. Again, the earth is unintelligible. So what is what makes this being rotate for it to function accordingly? So that there's a sun and the evening and the morning and the evening and the morning. So according to St. Thomas Aquinas, there must be a being uh, with whom all natural things are directed to their end. So for example, us, humanity. Humanity is though we are not really unintelligible, but then according to St. Thomas Aquinas, we have our end goal no? that is directing us to that which is kung unsi makas makaayo natin. No? That would be uh, what uh, St. Thomas Aquinas would be, would be telling his listeners before. So this is the argument from design, that tele teleological argument, that we are directed towards something with which the intellect and the intelligent being cost us or the ones causing us to achieve that uh, that which is our direction okay so again we have the three arguments today we have the ontological arguments from St. Anselm 
we have the cosmological arguments that says about the possibility and the necessity and the five proofs of God's existence according to St. Thomas Aquinas. It's very classical, so it's kind of a little bit boring, but it's very much part of the philosophy of religion. Unless we'd be able to understand really this necessary being, the contingent beings, the, the first cause, then we will not be able to see how the classical people are thinking that there is really, that there must be a God who existed prior to the existence that we are seeing right now. Okay, so I'll, I'll stop this presentation and I'll start uh, the conversation with, uh, with all of you. Gikapoy mo, kaya kung gikapoy ko, biyaw yaw. Who wants to talk? Sinatulog na mo diha, ha? Wake up, wake up. Uh, who wants to give you out his, what he was, what is his in mind or her mind? as I was uh, discussing the proofs of God's existence. Hello? Anybody? Julian? Do you want to share something? Uh, none so far, Father. Thank you, Paul. Okay. So, anyone wants to to share before we end the class? Uh, by the way, uh, again, because it's almost final exams, I will be posting the videos so that it would be easier for you to open, but the guide questions would still be on our e-learning. Okay? It's the same thing that we have to follow. I just love to check, but we still have our on. Can we meet again on Friday, the same time, one thirty to three? Okay, lang. Yes, sir. Yes, okay. Sir. So we'll we'll move mm -hmm. forward. The classical arguments will move forward to to the next uh, proofs of of God's existence. Uh, if you don't have any question, uh, I'll uh, we just have to end the class. I have another one for there. Uh, Father, can we, can we possibly ask for a copy of uh, today's PowerPoint, Father? Sorry. Uh, uh. Hey, butang na lang ako sa e-learning. Would that be okay? Um, I'm just going to... Uh, put it on the e-learning. Uh, uh, yes, Father. Okay, I'll have it on this week. Okay? Thank and you, Father. Use, uh, uh, subscribe so that you can know if I'm going to... I have some of the... I, I work on videos for mental health. Uh, para sa mga bata o sa mga senior citizen, you might, you might want to, to add it and to... Um, what you call this, share it to some of your friends. Okay, I have some doodles that I made for, for them. So that would be thanks, Julia. I'm going to put it down on Elon. Hey, Father. Father. Sir, I have a question. No. Sir. Yes, Father. Anang regarding sa lesson 2.2, Father, kay dilit mo play ang video sa theistic God. Don't theistic God. Yes, Father. Yes, Father. Thank you, Father. Uh, what else? Any clarification? Don't worry. Our final exams will start with uh, the proofs of God's existence. The next three meetings that we, have, we will be having would be the coverage of our final exams. But please, I still have to put on for your two uh, forums that I can use for the grading because I need to have grades for you. So I'll be posting probably three forums that you have to chat. Don't worry, it's, uh, it's going to, I know it's uh, already, already final exams, but uh, I trust that you can make it, okay? Uh, it's not gonna be so soon. I just have to, uh, I'll have to weigh when you really learn about the, the, the lesson for the day, okay? Buddy. Hi, Father. 
Krista. Okay. Um, sir, mag semi-final pa ta, sir? Wala. Your semi-final grades will be taken from your forums. Now, we, I still have to have to ask to, to request for three forums from you, the, the you know, the group having to be for your final grade. Okay? Okay, sir. Thank you. Welcome. Any thought, Russell? Father? Hi, Father. About sa kotong INC na ako, Father. Yes. Russell, how are you? Do you want to, do you want us to talk na lang in private later on? after the class? Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, Father, yes, Father. Pabilin, ha? Yes, Father. Okay. Who else? Murag duha ramam siguro ang INC. Kung kitsa tong name ko ganina ang school niya. What else? Do you have any other question and concern? If you would be, I, I would be asking you to subscribe on the YouTube so that you have, you can actually browse uh, all the materials for the, all the videos for um, philosophy of religion for your personal consumption. Okay. Okay. Di mag na apastanan. We can have, you can just, uh, I, I know it's a, it's not going to be live because it's only like three or four minute videos. So you'd have fun with it. Okay? Ramis, you have to subscribe, huh? Father. Ano mo makita? Ano mo makita yung YouTube, Father? Uh, my YouTube channel is just Erdman Pandero. Ah, okay, Father. Thank you. But I the link. Uh, I'll send Hi, you. Father. Kill someone then, but Krista. Hi, Father, can you send me a message? Can you message a link? Yes, Krista, I'll do it later. Thank you. Ah, later, pati ang... Okay, thank you so much, Father. We, did mag -grind, mag we will be grinding this week so that uh, you'll have to finish your semifinal grades through your forums and then we'll prepare for the final exams. That'll be okay. Like probably we'll have three or four lessons for the week. But we did them kita. This is the first one. I'm going to post on Wednesday, on Thursday, and then we'll meet on Friday. But that be okay lang? Or maapas ang gamay? Ginagmay ra? It's not going to be a burden to all of you. Okay ra? Okay Raman, Father. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, Father. Father. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so I think that's... Uh, this is it. Uh, I'll post this and then make a discussion, ha? I'll give some guide questions for our on Kadong Hatu Ang's PowerPoint presentation. Ha? Okay. So, ang nag... Hold on. How am I going to stop the recording? Sige. Mm. So, who wants to say the closing prayer? Josh, do you want to say it? Or anyone? Okay, uh, Dino? Yes, Father. Okay, do you want to say the prayer? Thank you, Father. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Dear Lord and Father of all, thank you for today. Thank you for ways in which you provide for all of us. For your protection and love, we thank for you. Inspire us by your Holy Spirit as we, from our discussions uh, from this week, and guide us by your eternal light as we discover more about the world around us. We ask all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. See you on Friday, 1.30 to 3 again, okay? Bye. Thank you, Father. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you, Father. 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 I'm here. Bye.
Jules. Bye, Jules. Bye, Ryan. Okay. Time pa kajut ka ng... Yung sini? Kaya hasil ha kaya na recorded ni. I-record mo na ako ato para sa klase. Pero di, kinahang lang yun nga mapuwas. Kaya okay, basin yung ma... ma there.